Welcome to a new video. This one is actually gonna have a theme, unlike all the rest of them. I, there's a cat down there. So if you hear meowing, that's her. I, in this video, am going to be reading This Mortal Coil. I don't know what the trilogy is called, but first one is This Mortal Coil, second one is This Cruel Design, and third one is This Vicious Cure. Currently, I am reading This Mortal Coil. I just picked it up on audio, and this is definitely gonna be like spoilers, all that kind of stuff. I'm like an hour-ish into it, and I'm liking it. Basically, I know I'm like reading the back of the last book, so we're gonna put that away for now. Basically what's happening, it's a little bit confusing to me. So they were living in the United States. There's a virus, common theme in the books I'm reading lately, that is de like destroying, ravaging the earth. And there's a corporation called Car Car Cartaxis. Car there's an organization called Cartaxis where they have commandeered like all knowledge and information and they've disbanded all the governments and they are in charge of everything basically just by holding power over this virus and this vaccine they like offer shelter for people and so they are the system of government basically and they're like really like horrible horrible people the main character katarina is the son of a doctor slash gene person who came up with a vaccine for the flu that like completely like eradicates it back in the past. So she's like really, really smart and can hack things. And so in this world also, in this world, people have the ability to alter their gene code so they can alter their code for basically anything, to look a certain way, to think a certain way that kind of stuff. So she is a hacker that specializes, I think, in gene hacking, but there's also like a neural thing that is like electronic embedded in people's arms that is the catalyst for this like gene coding thing that you can do. I don't know, it's very like scientific and dystopian and I don't understand it, but maybe I will as we move along. But I'm liking it so far, so far, her father has been taken by Cartaxis to help with this new virus that's killing the world. And he has allegedly come up with a vaccine, but after he came up with the vaccine, his lab exploded and he died. So Cole, our main male character, comes at her dad's behest to find her to remake the cure that got destroyed in his lab with him. So Cole and Kat have found each other. They are going to Canada because something in Cole's genes from her dad told them that this is where they need to go to find answers. So they're on their way to Canada from North Dakota. So not really that far, but that's where we're at. I'm liking it and I'll check in later. I'm halfway through this mortal coil. It is the same day. I am on track to finish it tonight. I don't have anything going on except The Bachelor at eight, so I might finish it. We'll see. But, so last time I checked in, they were on their way to Canada. They didn't get to Canada. They made it to a cave with a bunch of Cat's dad's stuff. And there was a cannibal in there and Cole got shot. And so they went to a friend of Kat's who's a surgeon, he got surgery and he's all good now, but he like betrayed them where he took something out of Kat's gene code and to save his wife. And so she was like, mm, I don't like you. And Cole's whole thing is that he's programmed in his gene code to save Kat, to like protect her at all costs by Kat's dad. And so they escaped and then they got, they were like on the road and then they got tracked by Cartaxis and they run into Dex and Cole's brother who take them to one of the bunkers. And in the bunker, everyone's living like happily and Kat's currently like, oh my God, is my dad the bad guy? Like, 
what's going on. And then they realize, Kat realizes that this virus that's literally like the final effect of this virus is making you explode and then infecting other people around you. So that virus, they realized that virus, they found out about it like 30 years ago and it's slowly been like growing and they've been trying, there's two sides to it over the course of these 30 years. One side is preparing all these bunkers and like to go into hiding until it passes. And the other half is finding a cure. And so Cartaxis is the side that is going into the ground and like doing all these bunkers. And her dad, Lachlan is his name, was on the side of finding a cure, which meant experimenting on children, one of whom is Cole. So that's where we're at. She is currently like trying to get something out of her arm like her code is like corrupted or something and so she's trying to get it out of her arm and by the way these aren't robots like they're human beings but they're it's like so their gene code and the science that comes along with it is so advanced that it, it makes me like when i'm talking about it it makes them sound like they're robots and they're literally like programmed with computer science. I'm kind of just thinking of them all as robotically, gen genealogically, I don't know if that's a word, engineered humans. So yeah. I am like 75% of the way through. I have like two hours and 15 minutes left. I'm really liking it a lot more than I thought I was gonna. It's kind of like a new thing for me just recently. Like obviously sci-fi YA is not a new thing, but I haven't read a lot of sci-fi YA for a while. And this is like dystopian and pandemic vibes and sci-fi-y. Like it's a whole mishmash, but I'm really liking it. So they are in the bunker. It's called Homestake. They get there and it's all perfect and wonderful. And basically they realize that Cat is the key to unlocking the cure, which means, so the cure is in Cole's DNA, but Cat is going to have to like overload her gene system to unlock it, which is gonna kill her. So that's like the big reveal recently is that she has to die to get the cure, the vaccine for this virus. It's called Hydra, I realized. So they are fleeing from home stake to go to somewhere else to unlock this coat. And Kat is very okay with dying. It's a little bit strange. And then just now, Novak, the head of like the rebels, so like the opposing, the opposing group of people from Cartaxis has just come in and like basically abducted them. So maybe it's like the rebels are the bad guys and Cartaxis is actually the good people. Nobody knows. I'm just vibing. And... <laughs> continuing to read this book i have two hours and 15 minutes left the bachelor starts at eight and it's like 6 15 right now so i might continue it after the bachelor is finished or it'll just be a tomorrow thing all right so last night after the bachelor i finished this mortal coil i don't remember where i left off they released the vaccine into everybody cat didn't die and they realized that she is not the bad guy's daughter. Like biologically, he just changed her gene code to look like him. And he pretended that she was his daughter, even though she was one of the kids that was being experimented on, that they were looking for, like Cole was looking for, but they like didn't know where she was. And so it's like, oh my God, you're her, but she doesn't really have, like she doesn't feel like her. She feels like a completely different person because like her entire gene code has been rewritten. So it's still like a little bit rocky between all the characters. 
and stuff. The Hydra virus has been like wiped out and they killed Lachlan, her dad, her dad. But it turned out that he was a puppet, which is basically just like a mind controlled person. They like use their gene code to mind control people. And so the real Lachlan is still out there somewhere and they're gonna find him. So that was the end of this mortal coil. I gave it four stars. I pretty much enjoyed it. Like it was a solid, solid book. And this morning I started the second one, this cool design, which is shorter. So that's nice. I might finish it today. I have like four hours left of it. So yeah, they're on their way to find Lachlan and actually kill him. But there's a new strain of the Hydra virus. And so people keep exploding. And so like the virus like isn't over. People still think that she's cat. Like the general public still thinks that she's cat. There are only a few people who know that she is actually this girl that was experimented on. So that makes her like super, super valuable to people. So they don't want people finding out. And they just went into this facility that has Dax and her brother, Leobin. It sounds like, in the audiobook, it sounds like she's saying Logan. I, I don't know. Um, but so they're all together. They go to this facility where they kind of like check out her gene code and they are just basically continuing to try and find Lachlan and also avoid this new strain of the virus. I was gonna say, I completely forgot about it because I'm kind of just like listening and I forget sometimes, but the reader of this audiobook is so, like pronounces words so strangely, like amateur for amateur, Leobin sounds like Logan. She enunciates the word vaccine as vaccine. I, I don't know, it's just like strange inflections that make me giggle sometimes. It's not like taking away from the story at all. It's just like really strange the way she pronounces some words. So yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm still liking it. I'm like, 75% of the way through the audiobook for this cool design. Where we left off, they are in this place called Entropia. So they meet this girl called Regina and she turns out to be Kat's like biological mom. Kat's like a clone of Regina's daughter. And so Cartaxis, the bad people, or the good people, nobody knows, killed her, killed the kid to get Regina to do what they wanted. And Regina's like a really good like hacker. And now there's like more of that mutated virus. Kat had to cut her arm off to get rid of this like weevil, like robotic type thing in her arm. And so they're still trying to find Lachlan who is apparently somewhere. There she goes. Oh my God, you missed the camera entirely. What a cutie. But they're still trying to find Lachlan so that he can stop this vi virus because he has the cure, etc, etc. And Cartaxis is implementing a plan to basically like nuke the entire world and get rid of all the people because that's the way that they can like 100% successfully get rid of this virus. So they're trying to stop that because there's like 100 million like innocent people up on the surface, even though everyone in the bunkers would be fine. So that's what they're trying to stop. I'm liking it. Like it's a new, it's a new flavor for me in the past couple weeks. But I, like from recent events, Kat is just way too, like she's way too chill with cutting off her own arm. She's like, oh, I need to do this. And then the last book it was, oh, I need to die to save everybody. I'm like, and there was no issues in her brain. Like, oh, what if I wanna like live a full life? It was just automatically like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hurt myself. And it's, I just like, don't get it. She's always the one that doesn't know anything. And there are all these men around her like every character every main character except for Kat is a, a male person and it's 
a little bit frustrating when it's like all of these men are talking to Kat and Kat's like, oh, like, what does that mean? Like, what, like, da, 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 and they're all just like, oh, obviously this is what it is. So that's frustrating. Bechdel test who? But like, other than that, the story is like really interesting. It's kind of a ruthless way of coming up with the virus because literally like the end of the virus is like you explode and that's how you die. Honestly, like I'm chill. It's interesting, which I think is the like the main thing that's like intriguing me. Uh, I only have two hours left of the audiobook. I'm definitely gonna finish it tonight, which would literally be another audiobook finished in a day. So they got out of the facility. They like let a lot of like people in. So the whole place is probably infected now, but they're at a safe house. And the drama that's happening now is that Kat overheard Cole and Anna. I didn't mention, mention her, but Anna's Cole's sister they're talking and they're talking about like how like oh it has to be me cole says that she's my responsibility uh i have to do it da, 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 da. and so kat is jumping to all these conclusions about like oh my god like what does it mean this 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 and this and she's just like has like the classic ya girl trope where she doesn't know what the hell's going on and she's jumping to all these conclusions and it's really stressing me out and is frustrating because like if she had just thought rationally about all of these things that like she's the key to like everything in this world is she wouldn't be going insane over these like lines and like maybe if she just got up like the energy to like ask him like hey what's going on i'm a part of this too i want to know he could have just told her rationally but i can just tell this is gonna like blow up i'm also like the science is really interesting i just have no visualization of it like it's gene coding and there's something embedded in their arm that goes into their genes and they can like click on it and like blink and like augmented reality happens for them like they see things over what they're currently seeing like like texts and stuff and there's just no visual that i have in my mind about like how this looks or how this physically works and i'm going along with it and it's fine but there's no visual that i'm having in my mind and it's kind of frustrating i finished this cool design i loved it so much so basically where we left off cat has just is like being really dramatic about this stuff she realizes that this other guy motto who they've been like chilling with was actually in love with the girl in that like cat used to be june bay is her name and so they run off together and motto is like turns on her basically and is like hey like i'm gonna get june bay out of you because i love her and so then cole and his sister anna show up and like take him down and they realize that anna like can't die that's like her superpower and so then to get june bay out of her cat shoots herself and so they have this really long conversation in their heads basically like they're like sharing a body their brain is like split in two and like one of them is each side of the brain which is wild and i don't understand how that would work they like come to this conclusion they're like okay we're gonna share our brain we're gonna work through this together so she comes back out she like heals herself and it's fine and then they go back to Entopia, where cartaxis is like like launching an assault on the people who live there and so they go and they find her dad so or dad right so he's there and he basically like tells them that Junbei is actually his daughter and she did something like really horrible like she killed a bunch of people and so he like put her to sleep inside Kat's body and Kat is only like a host to get her through all these years and so once people like forget about her killing all these people then she can come back so Kat is like a meaningless body and so Kat's like oh my god I'm so offended because what the fuck she's like really hurt and then her dad like gets away Junbei is like 
no, 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 I want this body. So she takes control of it. And that's like the end. That's like the last final thing. And so everyone's like scattered around. They have like no memory of the virus basically, like it's contained and everyone's okay. Cause Kat did something to everyone's genetic code to make them forget the last like couple months. So that's where the next book picks up is Kat like not in control of her own body and Jinbei is like the new villain. Meanwhile, her dad is still out there and they're trying to eradicate death, which like if you know sci-fi books is like not a good thing. Like we don't want to live forever. The people who want to live forever are always the bad guys in sci-fi. So I finished it and I was like, oh my God, I like, is this a five star? I think this is a five star. I really liked it. I think it's a five star. I am just getting so attached to all of these characters. I was saying earlier, like, oh, like there's all these boys telling Kat what to do. And now that it's just Kat and Junbei, I'm like, okay, well, where are the boys? <laughs> so I have conflicting thoughts and I just like, I'm really into the friendships and all of the like the, the sister and brotherly relationships and the romantic relationships like I'm just really into them and it's like super interesting and all the twists like they're getting me and I'm like living for them there are so many twists but like I'm here for it and so I think this is a five star I did not expect it to be a five star but I think the story has really 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 been expanded upon really really well and so I'm gonna give it five stars. Like I loved it. It's a feeling, a five star is a feeling and this is it. So the next one, which I also have on audio is This Vicious Cure, last and last and final, no. It's the third and final book in the trilogy where we're like gonna try and defeat Junbei and not live forever. Okay, we're in a different spot because there's literally construction happening all around my house and I can't be in my bedroom because it's just too loud. Basically, today the goal is to finish this vicious, vicious, this vicious cure. I have started it already. I have a headache because of all this stress from the construction. And so I've literally been reading it for what feels like the entire day listening to the audiobook and I just looked at my progress I'm only two out of six hours into it so I'm only a third of the way through and I was like I could have sworn I've been listening to this for like hours and hours it's like only 1 1 p.m <laughs> so I'm in a quieter space I'm gonna try and continue reading while I play my games on my phone and finish it tonight. Once it gets later, it'll be easier for me to concentrate. Uh, oh, and where we're at, we started the story and so Junbei is trying to come up with a cure for death and Kat is existing in this like virtual reality headspace that Junbei is like locked her in. She gets rescued by Lobin and is now able to exist as like an augmented reality version of herself so everyone around them can see her through their like VR lenses in their eyes, in their gene code. So she's like a ghost sort of. <laughs> um, and so she is working with Lobin and Cartaxis to come up with a like final cure for this disease. And then on the other side, Junbei is with her like group of people, group of scientists trying to like solve death, which is like the opposite. So there are two sides. Junbei is kind of like going rogue and definitely thinks that she's doing the right thing, even though she's definitely the villain. Everyone's sort of morally gray in this one. Kat in her ghost state has just found Anna and they just found Cole. Cole doesn't remember who she is because everyone got their memories from the last three months erased. And yeah, but other than that, nothing has really happened. We're just in the expositional stages of this book. 
because there was a there was a pretty big time jump in between the last book and this book so i'm not really vibing so far but again i'm only a third of the way through so it might pick up and everyone keeps saying oh like we're on the edge of a war so i can only assume that war is between people trying to just like live and get back to normal life and reality and junbei so but honestly i can't tell who's the actual villain because everyone is so morally gray the construction has stopped i'm three quarters of the way through and so much has happened oh okay so i'm gonna tell this from two different perspectives we have katarina and we have junbei first off katarina they just found cole and they realized that junbei is planning on kidnapping Lachlan, the evil scientist, Kat's dad, to come up with the cure for death. They get a, a note from one of the children of the trials that all these kids were a part of when they were kids saying like someone's orchestrating this whole thing, someone wants there to be a war, I know who that is, come like come find me, come to me. And so they go back to the cabin that Kat was living at at the very, very beginning of the trilogy and they find the girl, she's in cryo sleep and they realize that the Viper, who is the old head of Cartaxis, is Agnes. I don't remember if I've mentioned her, but she was Kat's like old friend during the virus when she was alone in the cabin and they had like a really good relationship and Agnes has kind of shown up in places throughout the series but I'm always I've always been suspicious of her so this makes sense that she is the one Agnes is the one trying to orchestrate this whole thing and to make everyone want to have a war she's the one infecting the pigeons so that the virus spreads faster she's the one infecting all these people so that they turn into zombies with the like the rage gene pronounced in their bodies so she's the one like orchestrating the whole thing and the girl her name is Ziana who figured all that out and sent them the message they just ran into her after figuring that out and after uh going into a bunker getting captured and then like almost dying because Agnes almost like destroyed the entire bunker like it was a self-destruct thing and so they almost got killed and then they got out and they have just run into Ziana so that's another twist uh from Junbei's perspective she was at the facility uh she just like kicked Cole out so while they're finding him she's in this facility trying to kidnap Lachlan but then she realizes that Lobin has the key to the gene because his superpower is something to do with like instincts and he can like have like like he can have like pronounced instincts I don't know what it what it what it exactly means but she realizes that if she captures him she can bring out the death gene or something and like she'll get the final missing piece of her death cure and she does that and Le Loban almost dies because she's like, I can bring you back because I'll have the cure once I get this thing out of your DNA. And so he's like in a fugue state. He like doesn't know what the hell's going on. Unconscious, basically. He's being like nursed back to health. And then, so since they have this uh, cure now, Junbei is kind of like, oh, like, but like, what? Like, this is so, such a big deal. I don't want to just release it into the world because what if it's like used without people's permission, like without consent? and so she's having like thoughts about like oh maybe this isn't the right idea but Mato is like no 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 we're doing this he's kind of like coercing her into doing all this stuff so he's kind of becoming a more pronounced villain but i think agnes is the main villain so they just ran into her and i think they're probably gonna have a super important conversation about what's all going on so everyone knows that she has the cure for death on her because she just used it on a bunch of infected people but she wants to like keep it to herself because she's like oh but it needs more it needs more tweaks so she's kind of becoming more of a morally gray character even though some of her decisions are like mm. meanwhile cat is still like a ghost that everyone can see through vr it's strange but um we're in the final third so shit's gonna go down i finished this vicious cure so they had their chat and it turns out that agnes 
created Gentech, like Agnes and Lachlan together created Gentech, which is the technology that is like embedded in everyone's genes because of the hydrovirus, which is like the big bombshell, which means that like nobody can trust this organization and everyone starts to kind of like think for themselves and there's a big like conversation of like consent and like what is right to give to everybody and obviously like sort of with our lives and vaccines nowadays it's like you can't force anyone to do that which is a big a big conversation in this series whether it's a vaccine or like a gene code implant thing and so then the five test subjects that survived anna cole logan ziana junbei and cat they all come together to unlock the hidden thing that will complete the vaccine so that the virus can be eradicated for good and in doing so they need to unlock junbei's like a full brain so cat basically gives herself up and takes herself out of Junbei's body. So Kat doesn't have a body and basically like dies. But then in the end, she there there is a body for her in like some weird scientific way and she gets her brain and her like consciousness implanted into that body so she can live on. And it's sort of like a fun ending where everyone is kind of coming up with new ways to use this technology that was made because of this horrible virus and so there's kind of a new resurgence of new technology and new artistic forms of doing stuff that's actually pretty cool so that was me reading this series so you don't have to those are those videos are oftentimes like negative reviews but I did really enjoy this series so I haven't read a YA sci-fi in a while so it was just like a fun series to listen to and oh I gave this vicious cure four stars so this series for me at least absolutely did not suffer from middle book syndrome like quite the opposite which honestly good for it all in all I feel like I just really really loved this series and I didn't think I would and I'm so glad that I kind of like just binged it all in one go. Um, I just like fell in love with these characters and I, it's so hard for me to do that when I'm just like reading a book that is already on my shelves so that I'm like oh I like I gotta read this but like I was pleasantly surprised by how much I just like loved them and there were a couple moments where I was kind of like oh like I don't really see the full reason why you're doing this but all in all I think the characters bumped it up for me like the character development and the character arcs and their personalities were just like so fun and it was a it was kind of like a cast of main characters too other than like Kat and Cole so that was just a really good thing I didn't realize but the author like worked as a data scientist so she kind of understands all this which is so fun and obviously like she would have to to write this in depth of a series but um maybe my tiny pea brain wasn't big enough to handle all of that because i was lost at some points but i think it's a story and i it was just fun to read thanks for tagging along and i'll see you later